members on the call. Starting the program with an opening prayer, and I'm privileged to be leading this prayer. I'm Willy Banaigam, the president of Father's Union of Namirembe Diocese. Let's humble ourselves in prayer. Uh, Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this wonderful morning, the night that we have taken us through, and the new day that we've been able to see. Lord, we thank you for your blessings. And Lord, all those opportunities that come with the new day. Lord, we thank you for this special day in Father's Union, where Lord will be having a special event. We pray, Lord, that as we go through this event and as through we go through this one hour of activities, Lord, that your spirit rests on us. That Lord, we can be able to conceptualize, we can be able to own, you can give wisdom, Lord. Uh, to our presenters and facilitators, and Lord, that you give us a quiet mind to be able to absorb and understand at the work that we'll be doing this morning. Lord, we pray for our colleagues who, are ex who may be experiencing connection problems using technologies onto this network. Lord, we pray that you open up where the areas of shortfalls are that they can join us soon. We pray all this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Amen. our brother Wilbur Naikan. We praise the Lord for this wonderful morning and we would like to welcome all of you who are here today. Thank you for coming for this wonderful morning, the Provincial Fathers Union Fellowships Guide Launch 2024. I would like you to right now get into the chat room and post your name, your diocese, and your position in case you have any. Your name, your diocese, and in case you have a leadership position there in that diocese, please post in the chat room. So let's do that. We will do that for the next about two minutes or three, and then we will continue with our program. So just get into the chat room now. We would like to know who is here, where are you from? So post in the chat room your name, your diocese, and your position of responsibility or leadership in the case you have one. My name is Samuel A. Bakutana, the Provincial Fathers Union President, the husband of charity, the father of Petra and Prosper, the CEO of Inspired Leaders International, a born again Christian by the grace of God. So please post in the chat room right now where, who you are, where you are from, the diocese, and any position of responsibility that you could be having. So the rest of us, let's be in that chat room looking at who is around so that we know who has joined us this wonderful morning. Amazing people in the room. Good to see all these wonderful guests that are posting. Wow. You can see there is Wilbur Naigambi, the president of Father's Union, Namenembe Diocese. You're welcome. Asasara Fina from the Diocese of Northwest Ankore in Iwanda, you're welcome. The Right Reverend Amos Magezi, the Bishop of the Diocese of Northwest Ankole, you're welcome. And Mr. Avutia Ben Amos from Bukedi Diocese, you're very welcome. Lei Canon Dralega Onesmas from Madi West Nile Diocese, you're very welcome. Reverend Duncan Mugume from the Diocese of Kampala, you're welcome. Our brother, Mr. Jesse Ainebiona from the Diocese of Kampala, you're welcome. Mr. Kugonza Julius from the Diocese of Ruenzori, you are very welcome. Odnand D. Kiluchamuzi from St. Rachel Hulange Church of Uganda in Namirembe Diocese, you're very welcome. 
Mr. Israel Chigozi from the Diocese of Kampala, the Chairman of Fathers Union at St. Andrew's Church of Uganda, Koto, you are welcome. Mr. Obo Richard Dozel from Bukedi Diocese, good to have you here. Patrick Semogere from Namilembe Diocese, holding the health portfolio, you're welcome. Canon Dr. Ruth Senyonyi, wonderful First Provincial Mothers Union President, the Church of Uganda, you're very welcome. Ahurura Ivan from the Dice of Ruenzo in Fort Porto, a youth and aspiring Fathers Union member when God makes the time due, you're very welcome. Good to have you online. Madam Emily Nakamia, the Treasurer Development Committee and Mothers Union in St. Luke's Masaba Church of Uganda from Namilembe Diocese, you are very welcome. Good to have you here. Mr. Milton Hafashimana, the Vice Treasurer of Fathers Union, the Dice of Kampala, and the Fathers Union Chairman of the Church of the Resurrection in Bugorobi, you are welcome. Dr. James Kafelo from Namilembe Diocese, Natete Archdeaconary, Kavumba Parish, the Health Department Fathers Union in the Natete Archdeaconary, you are welcome. Mr. Robbie Gensi from St. Francis Chapel Makere University in the Dice of Kampala, former chairman of Fathers Union, you are very welcome. Our brother Herbert Mugumia, a Fathers Union member from Ankole Diocese, you are very welcome. Reverend Captain Mundulu Helen Aibo, the Family Life Coordinator of the Diocese of Madi West Nile, what a joy to have you here today. Mr. Herbert Kachiza, St. Luke Namaina, Namirembe Diocese, you're welcome. Kato Kefa from the Diocese of Muhabura, Tuishimiye Chane Kubona, Wakoze Chane Kuza Uyumunsi. Mr. Katongore David from Namirembe Diocese, Uwebale Nyokuja, Toyanzi za Toyanzi. Mark Nwagumza, the Father's Union member from Church of the Resurrection of Gorobi, Sevo Tuwako Achira. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here. And we have those that have not posted in the chat room, but we are here with them and I can see them. Um, Rotarian John Sesanga from Mitiana Diocese, St. Andrew's Cathedral, you are very welcome. I would like to also go ahead and uh, appreciate the fact that we have a number of other people here. We have uh, the Deputy Chief Administrative Officer, Namutumba, district who happens to also be the Father's Union President for the Diocese of North Mbale, our brother Gidongo Peter Wasagami, you're very welcome. And he represents Eastern Uganda on the Provincial Father's Union Executive. But also, ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. Twine Addison, the Chairman of the Father's Union at St. Luke's New Marago Chapel in Mulago Hospital. But most of all, we have our provincial patron, none other than His Grace, the Most Reverend, our dear Archbishop, Dr. Samuel Stephen Kazimba Mugalu, with us in the room. Our dear Archbishop, you're so, 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 so welcome. It's a joy to have you here this morning. Yeah, feel free, ladies and gentlemen, to unmute yourself and just clap or put some, some emojis somewhere. Welcome our Papa in the house, here with us. Wonderful. So without further ado, we are getting to the next aspect of our meeting this morning, and we would like to hear some Father Zion ministry testimonies from some two people, from some two dioceses, from some two regions. They will give us highlights about what is happening in the, in the region that they represent, on the Provincial Fathers Union Executive Committee. So without further ado, I would like to right now welcome our brother, the lay canon Onesmus Ruarega, the Fathers Union President of the Diocese of Madi West Nile <coughs> and the Northern Uganda Regional Representative, the Provincial Fathers Union Executive Committee. Our brother, canon Onesmus, kindly unmute yourself and share with us briefly what is happening in Madi West Nile Fathers Union and also a little sneak peek into the northern region of Fathers Union. 
over to you, Brother Onesimus. Thank you so much, my brother, Your Excellency, the President, Fathers Union, Diocese of uh, Kampala, and also the Provincial Fathers Union President. You're welcome. I'm very grateful. His Grace, the Archbishop, who is also the patron of Fathers Union of the province of Church of Uganda, and my colleague, members of Fathers Union, Mothers Union who are here, dignified members attending right now. I want to just appreciate God for this opportunity. Quickly to what's happening here, as already introduced, I'm Canon Onesmas Dralega, President of Fathers Union, Diocese of Somalia and West Nile, also double as the Northern Regional Representative of the Executive Fathers, uh, Provincial Executive Fathers Union. Uh, quickly, uh, members listening, Fathers Union in Madi Western Diocese didn't start long ago, just way back around 2008. But, but over time, it took quite actions from 2015. And now, I must say, we have moved very far. Fathers Union already co commissioned five rooms of the block that were now housing all the departments of ministry of mission in the diocese. We also took a step to go and renovate the house of the late bishop, the second bishop of the diocese, Bishop Right Reverend Remilia Rinko in Izombo. And that was very, very significant. And we did that. And I must say, members, we also moved to establish Father's Union in all the archdeaconaries. As we're talking now, in all the 13 archdeaconaries on the diocese, Father's Union has all executives set up, and we have a number of other members about over 500 members in the diocese right now as I'm talking about. We also moved on to establish with support of the Diocese of Aru in the Republic of Congo, the province of uh, Congo and Congo Brazzaville. We helped to establish Father's Union, what they call Union de Pair. And right now we're in a strong partnership with them. And uh, recently we established over 400 members of Father's Union and another invitation has been extended to us. We are going very soon in January to do it in three dioceses in that province. We, however, have a few challenges here. Generally, the low involvement of men in this ministry is a hiccup to us. But with the help of the Diocesan Bishop, we have developed a strategy of talking to men. When Bishop goes for confirmation, he gives me a slot to speak to men. And this has yielded so much that recently we embarked on mass weddings. And one strategy that we also started was as we wed these men, we enrolled them into Father's Union straight away. And uh, the coordinator who is also attending with us, Reverend Helen, has established a book. It's a, a register of Father's Union. It's a big book that every parish now has a book that we have a record of all the Father's Union, capturing all the information about Father's Union. And this has helped us a lot to know who is who and doing what. And finally, we are embarking with the help of the, the support from our partners. Recently, we had a meeting with the president of Nebi, and we are having a, 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 a retreat in January in Nebi, in Prayer Mountain. And we're inviting all the leaders of Father's Union in the Northern Region Diocese for this retreat. And this retreat will help us to develop plans for next year. And so we are quite on form and trying to do so much with help of God. I thank you so much for giving this opportunity. With this launch of a fellowship guide, we will certainly be connected as a province and things will move well. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Lei Kanon. Onesimus Dualega from Madi West Nile. Thank you very much. We continue to pray that the Lord will use you as the leaders, not only in Madi West Nile Diocese, but in the, uh, the different dioceses in Northern Uganda that you represent on the Provincial Executive Committee as you mobilize men to mobilize families to build the church that builds the nation for the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We would like to go right ahead immediately 
to the next ministry testimony from our brother Wilbur Naigambi, a lecturer of mathematics at uh, Makere University, the Father's Union President of the Diocese of Namirembe, and the regional representative of the Central Region Father's Union at the Provincial Father's Union Executive Committee. Our brother Wilbur, you're very welcome. In just a few minutes, share a testimony of what is happening in the Diocese of Namirembe and throw some little light on the region as it is that you represent. You're very welcome. Thank you, brother Samuel, for that kind introduction. And uh, uh, your grace, the archbishop and members on the call, I'll run through this very quickly. I'll start by looking at uh, some of the things that are happening in Namirembe Diocese or that have happened uh, in the course of the year. Uh, we have used mass, mass weddings to build recruitment, recruitment grounds for new members. Uh, we worked with the Diocesan Mission Department to organize this year's mass wedding. And in the course of the year, we recruited 271 members into Father's Union. We also worked with the, the Diocesan Mission Department uh, to organize two conventions in the course of the year, uh, being uh, a faith-based uh, union. And Father's Union has also partnered with our youth ministry and the Mama Faith Rwarira Foundation to uh, promote the development of the boy child, which is a key uh, area in our strategic plan uh, over the next five years. And uh, we have continued to use sports and music, dance, and drama as activities that bring all fathers together. We organized and have had competitions for these two activities spanning from parish level and climaxing at the diocesan level. Uh, we have also participated in home fellowships. Uh, these are fathers meeting in homes and praying together. Uh, this is done at all levels now, but also participated in the Bible study fellowship. Uh, this is organized by BSF International where men come together and they study together uh, the scriptures as avenues that enable us to grow together spiritually. Uh, we have developed and engaged special training programs for our leaders right from sub-parish level to the diocese. Uh, this program aims at equipping leaders with the skills and knowledge that they need to effectively lead fathers at the various levels. Uh, the diocese allocated Fathers Union two acres of land at Bira. Bira is just beyond Bulenga here. And Fathers Union decided to build a community hospital on this land as an outreach ministry activity. Uh, in the course of the year, we continued construction works on this land. And uh, we also launched an advertising campaign for what all our members in Fathers Union do to enable them to get a bigger market for their goods and services right within the church. That if you're a member of Fathers Union, you would know where is engaged in this. Uh, or somewhere is engaged in this, and you can approach him to be able to get that good or service. Uh, briefly, at the regional level, uh, we continue with activities that bring leaders of the six dioceses together in this region. We held meetings and fellowships at Namirem Diocese headquarters in May, and another one in Iruweru Diocese headquarters in September. And we also had a football match as a result of these fellowships between Fathers Union Namirembe Diocese and Mitiana Diocese in November. We hope that going forward into the year 2024, uh, that we'll continue with those activities because these are continuous fellowships and activities that enable us to grow as fathers. But specifically at the diocesan level, I've had some challenges in really reaching out to Sese Parish. Sese Parish has about more than 54 islands and it's quite difficult really to minister uh, on that, uh, onto that big island. But we are working now with the, our coordinators, with the also uh, the mainstream church to ensure that Father's reach, Union can reach out in, to our fathers who are in Sese Parish. And lastly, partnering with Mother's Union, we have planned to visit the Holy Land in May 2024, so that we can see with our own eyes the areas and places mentioned in the scriptures. Registration for this trip is ongoing, 
And this trip is for members of Mothers and Fathers Union only. And we are hopeful that this will have a big impact on the faith of our members. Uh, thank you, uh, Brother Samuel. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Brother Wilbur, for the work that is being done in the Dice of Nantembe, but also in the region. And we believe that God will continue to use you and your team to minister to men so that they can minister to their families, the families that will build the church, the church that will build the nation for the kingdom of God to expand. At this moment, we are getting into another moment of edification. We have our guest speaker, a man of God that I have known for quite some time, a preacher of the gospel, a teacher of the Bible, a fellow father and fellow husband, a responsible minister, a former provincial secretary of the Church of Uganda, and currently the Bishop of North West Angola Diocese, Right Reverend Amos Magezi, to share with us about what happens when men gather and what power fellowship actually has. Bishop Amos Magezi, you're very, very, very welcome. Thank you very much. Uh my friend uh, mr bakutana uh, your excellency the president of fathers union in the province of church of uganda what a blessing what a privilege uh, to have this opportunity to share uh, in this important meeting uh, <clears throat> especially the topic when men meet the power of fellowship uh, I would like to begin by uh, giving a, a meaning of the word fellowship. Uh, the word fellowship means the companionship of individuals in a friendly atmosphere ah. and on equal terms. Let me repeat it because it's a general definition and understanding of the word fellowship, the companionship of individuals in a friendly atmosphere and on equal terms. Uh, you will understand this if we uh, continue to look at the meaning of this word fellowship from the biblical understanding. The, the biblical understanding of the word fellowship is the bond of common purpose and devotion that binds people together, but also to the one they are devoted to. Now, I will give some examples and then we will be able to understand. Um, people in fellowship must have a common purpose, but also they, are, they, are, they must have a devotion or they are devoted to someone. In our case, uh, as believers, if people have a common purpose and devoted to worshiping the living God, then they are in fellowship. Or uh, in the case of uh, Christians, because we are talking about Christianity, if people are devoted to following Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, then they are in fellowship. But also, People can be <clears throat> devoted <laughs> to worshiping any others or any other gods or, or individuals or, or objects or images. Still, those people are also in fellowship. So if we can understand this, then the last part of it is a warning. We must check the people we are in fellowship with because you may find that people are devoted to worshiping the devil, but you may not necessarily know. Or people may be devoted to worshiping uh, the individuals, 
just as we are seeing in the community today. So all that is what the fellowship is all about. And so I want us to learn from both good and bad examples, and then we will understand what the fellowship or the power of fellowship uh, is all about. In the Old Testament, <clears throat> I want us to know that God created us to live in fellowship uh, with him and with, with one another. If we can take uh, the Garden of Eden experience, God created man in his own image so that he can have fellowship with him. But unfortunately, this fellowship was distorted by the fall of man. You remember when God came in the evening to fellowship with man, only to find man had run away from him, only because he was, he was uh, ashamed, he was guilty, because he had fallen, he had sinned against his creator. That's how uh, God wanted us to have fellowship with him, but with one another. But the devil came and distorted that kind of uh, fellowship. Man could not have fellowship with God. A man could not have fellowship with one another because you remember the man and the woman, when they discovered they were naked, they decided to hide from one another. And they, are, they could not be in fellowship anymore. So this is very, very important for us. Uh, we are supposed to be in fellowship with God, but because of sin, it's not possible unless we come to Christ who, who bridged the gap between God and man and man with, hell, with his fellow man. That's when we can come back to the fellowship with God, but also to the fellowship with one another. So may God help us to know that there is, there is a need to embrace Jesus Christ, especially uh, men. We tend to run away from embracing Jesus Christ in our lives. And as a result, we are shamed because we are guilty. So we run away from God. And we do not stop there. We run away from one another. And so may God help us to know that still that need is there, that we need to come together as men, as, as family members or family leaders, so that we can continue to enjoy the power of fellowship. Well, I want us to know that God did this uh, because he himself likes to live and work in fellowship. You remember? the doctrine of the Trinity, God um, in uh, God in Trinity, uh, one, one in three and three in one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but being put together is one God. All that is the power of fellowship. So God has been able to accomplish his plans, of redeeming humankind, of saving humankind, because he likes to live and work in fellowship, or if you want, in unity. Well, we can as well, since we don't have a lot of time, uh, we can as well look at some other examples uh, in the Bible. Uh, and then from them, uh, we can as well learn what we are supposed to do even in amongst ourselves or in our families. The experience of the Tower of Babel is an example of common purpose and devotion in the Old Testament. Listen to what it says. Then they said, this is Genesis chapter nine, verse four. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered uh, over the face of the whole earth. I want us to know that this is a scripture that shows the power of fellowship. Because when they started to do this project of building the Tower of Babel, 
God was, was realized that there is power in fellowship and listen to what happened. Because these people were not doing God's will, listen to what God said and did. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that people were building. The Lord said, uh, if as one people, this is God himself speaking, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them uh, from, from there over all the earth and they stopped building the city. What do we learn from this? We see the power of unity, but the question is, or the power of fellowship, but the question is, are we doing God's will? These people are not doing God's will. They were making a name for themselves. They were being proud. They were being arrogant. And so that's why we need to also watch uh, when we talk about the power of fellowship. Are we in fellowship to do good or to do bad? Are we in fellowship to rebel against God or to do his will? So as men, uh, especially the challenge we have today in the society, men, men have power, men have money, men have energy, men are able to plan and do a lot of things, but are they intended for building God's kingdom? That's when we, if we can come together and we share ideas together, and then we can use those ideas, we can use the resources we have uh, to build the kingdom of God. And that's when we will experience uh, the power of fellowship as men, if we come together to do the will of God. Of course, there are other books in the Bible that talk about the power, of the, the, the power of common purpose and devotion, especially the, the book of Proverbs and the book of Ecclesiastes. But we don't have time to go for that. And so we, even if we go to the New Testament, we also can see uh, the experience uh, in, the, in the book of Acts uh, during the first church. And uh, so, so that we can see another example of common purpose and devotion in the New Testament. Because in Acts chapter 2, verses uh, 44 uh, to 47 says, all believers were together and had everything in common. This is very, very, very important for us. They had everything in common. Listen to what it says. They sold property and possessions to give to, one, to, to anyone who had need. And every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with hard and sincere hearts. So it means that their hearts were warm because they were in fellowship, praising, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So if we are looking at the challenge of men running away from the places of worship, even if the, the big men are running away from the places of worship, they are, they are, they are not there. Only, men, only women and children are there. What's going to happen in order to uh, to add daily the number of being of people who would be saved. This is going to happen if men be, will begin to meet, if men will be available in the places of worship, if men will be involved in evangelism, if men will be involved in, in prayer sessions, if men will be in, involved in day-to-day -day activities of the church and building of God's kingdom. That's when the world will be will will uh, will experience the impact of of men's presence, and of course the kingdom of God will continue to advance. And so may God help us uh, to learn from one another, even to learn from our environment, and even the context we are in. The family should teach us how the fellowship should be. The choir 
when we see people singing together and they produce good music, that should be a good example for us to uh, know the power of fellowship. Uh, worshiping together and during the time of Holy Communion, sharing the same cup, sharing the same bread, all that should be a good example for us to enjoy fellowship. And of course, in the nature, the nature around us, we also can see uh, things just as God put them together to work in fellowship so that they are able to enjoy one another. The bees um, can be a good example. They like to live and work together in, fel in fellowship. The termites, they, they, because they are weak, they are small, but because they live in fellowship, uh, they ride on being together and they're able to accomplish a lot. And so if we have appreciated the use and power of fellowship, then in the same way, men should meet always to encourage and sharpen one another in order to fulfill their mandate of being priests of their families. Men, if you commit to embrace fellowship with God's people, there are a lot of benefits and the Bible makes a lot of um, benefits of this, a lot of benefits we learn uh, from one another. You demonstrate a sincere love for Jesus. You receive the encouragement of harmony. You experience mutual acceptance among radically different people. You benefit from mutual instruction, encouragement, and correction. You gain opportunities for joy, mutual comfort, unity, encouragement, and peace. You use your new, newly found freedom uh, for loving and serving others. You receive God-given opportunities to develop patience. You become aware of God-given opportunities to grow in kindness and forgive, forgiving others. You receive mutual encouragement and growth that comes from corporate worship before God. You demonstrate reverence for Christ you put yourself on God's pathway for cultivating spiritual growth. You gain opportunities to see God's answer, God's answers to prayer, especially in the lives of others, because you intercede for them. You receive confrontation from others because you are among them, making yourself less vulnerable to the hardening deceitfulness of sin. You start uh, you stir up others to love and good work while being stirred up by others to love and good work. And of course, a lot of uh, benefits that you gain from uh, that good experience. So may God help us as men to meet together so that we can experience the power of fellowship. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Right Reverend Amos Magezi, the Bishop of the Diocese of Northwestern College, for sharing with us about the power of fellowship. Somebody post in the chat room your appreciation for our dear Bishop for helping us get this big picture of why we are talking about even having a guide concerning fellowship. And at this moment, I would like us to get into having an understanding of the Provincial Fathers Union Fellowships Guide that we are launching today. I will be so quick through this so that we are able to indeed be on time. Our vision as Fathers Union is Christ-centered families led by modern Christian men. That's the vision, Christ-centered families that are led by modern Christian men. And the mission of the Father's Union is to promote prosperous family life by equipping men to offer leadership, a kind of leadership that is based on Christian values. Now, we have 10 objectives as Father's Union, but this specific thing we are doing this morning is in line with objective one, which talks about empowering men to grow holistically 
in body, in soul, and in spirit, so that they can proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only in word, but also in deed, starting from their own homes. Ministry starts from home. But also objective seven that talks about promoting Christian principles, the national, civic, and community life, so as to ensure that the policies and societal conditions support family stability. So this fellowship and the guide are going to come in handy in enabling the men to achieve this and more. So thank you very much, Bishop Amos, for helping us understand what fellowship really is, the companionship of individuals in a friendly atmosphere and on equal terms, that bond of common purpose and devotion that binds people together and binds them to the one they are devoted to. When you read in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, we see that the disciples, the apostles, they were devoted to the teaching. They were devoted to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and prayer. In 1 John 1, 7, we are told that if we walk in the light, then we have to have fellowship with one another. And in Matthew 18, 20, Jesus promised that where two or three gather in his name, you will be with them. That is fellowship. And in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, we are told not to neglect meeting together as some have made it a habit. It seems during that time, some people had already made it a habit not to be in fellowship. And I think that is a habit that has not healed for many people. And that's why we are coming in now to say 2024, we need to resurrect the habit of meeting together as men, talk together, share together in order to grow together and serve together. So concerning the guide that is being launched today, next year, our Archbishop, together with the House of Bishops, have told us that the theme will be from Romans chapter 12, verse 2, conformity to God's truth, not the patterns of this world. So as Father's Union, we have come in to operationalize it from our angle and our ministry by having a sub-theme for the Father's Union ministry. And 2024, the sub-theme will be transformation through Christian values. Romans 22 talks about not being conformed to the standards of the world, but being transformed by the renewal, not the removal, by the renewal of our mind, so that we may understand God's will, which is good and perfect. So as Father's Union, we are coming in to say that transformation for us next year, we want to see how it can happen from the angle of Christian values. So for 2024, we would like to have values-based fellowships as Father's Union. And our, our, our values form the acronym of Christ, commitment, humility, relationships, integrity, servant leadership, and truth. So the fellowships are going to be run according to those values for 12 months. So for example, the value of commitment will be handled in January and February. We are highly encouraging men to meet at least, okay, at least monthly once, but ideally we would like to pray that you will be having a fortnightly fellowship, a fellowship every two weeks. And that's how this guide has been organized. So for example, you see on the screen uh, in the month of January, you have two topics, committed to finishing strong, and the Ministry of Presence, how to be available amidst business. So if you meet during the first two weeks of January, you, you have a conversation around that first topic. In the second weeks of January, you have a conversation about the second topic. And then in Feb, we are still looking at commitment. So first two weeks of Feb, have at least one time when you meet as, uh, as men for fellowship. We talk about being generous towards God's work, commitment to supporting the ministry. And then also the last two weeks, meet at least once, talking about a commitment to spiritual excellence. So that will go on like that. And you see, there is a quorum for the man, <laughs> the man of the day. Every time you meet as men in the fellowship, there will be the man of the day to study, guided by the scriptures that are attached to each topic, where we say, read God's truth. The value of humility will be uh, coming in in March and in April, you will be getting a copy of this, so I don't have to go through the details of this. I'm only giving us the big picture, the general picture. The value of relationships, where every member should nurture his relationships, friendships, and fellowship, 
We will run with that in the month of May and in the month of June. So there are a number of topics, as you can see, how to enjoy life together with your wife, how to be a present father in a Christian home, building mentoring relationships with younger men, business networking and relationships, ETC. Concerning the value of integrity, we will run with it in the month of July and August, where we will look at the power of integrity in a man's life, the courage to stand alone for integrity, overcoming sexual temptation through reliance on Christ, and applying integrity in our workplaces. Concerning the value of servant leadership, we will run with it in the month of September and October, talking about mm -hmm. impacting lives through service, talking about God standards and the lessons that men can learn in leading their families, making your family to love to serve and how you can lead your family as a protector. Then finally, the value of truth, we will run with it in November and December as we look at victory through the word that we know, as we look at how real men live boldly and serve fearlessly. And we will have to have a conversation around Christmas uh, during that time and how we can be grateful for the whole year. Remember, we are basing this fellowship next year on our six values of the, of the Father's Union, commitment, humility, relationships, integrity, servant leadership, and truth. So remember the three Ps for this fellowship. We will have time at the beginning of next year to continue to have a conversation around how we can run these fellowships uh, very effectively. For today, it's just giving an overview, but ensure that it is participatory. The fellowship should be participatory. Let all men participate. Let it be a discussion. Let it not be another church service with a preacher. This should be fellowships where men are sharing experiences, are asking questions, are discussing, participatory, but also keep the fellowships practical, handle real issues, put pretense on the side, get deep, help one another find real solutions for real issues that the men in this province are going through. And then the issue of priority, make these fellowships a priority for the operation of the Father's Union. Let us not be busy postponing, you know, you say we were supposed to have the fellowship tomorrow, but gentlemen, <laughs> We have postponed it, it will be next week, then next week, it is next week. No, no, something has come up. Let us see fellowships as a priority and as a rallying point for mobilizing the men of this country. Like I said, we will have more trainings about how to run these fellowships well as they are the case. So may this guide be a blessing and a resource in empowering men for their roles in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So at this moment, I would like to open it up just a few minutes, just a few minutes in about uh, only five minutes. I would like to have a pre-launch session of comments in case you have a comment about what has happened since we began this fellowship. I will give just a few people the opportunity. And then after that, we will immediately go to the remarks of our patron, the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, who will then launch the guide, and that will mark the end of this wonderful morning. So let me pause at this moment and ask whether there is somebody who has a very brief and quick comment to what we are doing this morning. So just raise your hand using an emoji, and then I will let you share with us anything you would like to share before we bring in the Archbishop to give comments and also to launch the guide that you have just seen in a brief. Like they do when they are auctioning, I should say going once, going twice. <laughs> so in case there is anybody who would like to share anything, to say something about all this, this is the opportunity. We only have four minutes for that. Yes, I see Hubbard Mugumia raising your hand. Please unmute yourself and go ahead and make your very brief comment. Hubbard. Thank you so much, our moderator. Good morning, everyone. Praise God. Um, I have listened to your program. I just wanted to know if this is a blueprint kind of 
uh, for all the dioceses and where um, a few activities will be taking place, kind of um, delegating, decentralizing uh, all these um, uh, activities. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hubbard. <clears throat> yes, indeed, to use your words, yes, it is a blueprint for fellowships across the whole province, in all dioceses, in all archdeaconaries, in all parishes, in all sub-parishes, and even in homes. This is going to be a guide for fellowships of men across the country, across the province. So yes, immediately after this session, we are going to start to send it all out across the country for everybody to access it and use it. Yes, Emmanuel Maraca, unmute yourself and share your quick comment. Emmanuel. All right, let's go on to Moses. Moses Mouria, West of Uganda. Kindly unmute yourself and give your very brief comment. I don't know whether you're speaking, Moses, because I see you're still muted, yet your hand is up. Let me go to somebody from St. Rachel Church of Uganda. I see your hand is up. Please unmute yourself and go ahead with your brief comment. Thank you, facilitator and the team on the conference. Please go ahead and keep it brief. The way of how the youth and the elders are handled in a unique way. Unfortunately, our brother, your network is not really good. We are struggling to, to hear. Emmanuel is now. Emmanuel is now online. All right. Sorry, our brother from St. Rachel Church of Uganda, your network is not good. We are not able to hear you. Emmanuel, go right ahead. Keep it brief. Thank you. How do we access, how do we access this uh, Father's Union guy? Beautiful. Yes. Emmanuel, where are you? I am in Kumi and uh, I am part of the diocesan team and I, part, uh, I have the responsibility of uh, head of planning and socioeconomic transformation in the diocese of Kumi, headed by Bishop Esakan. So we are going to send this to all the dioceses through the diocesan secretaries and also uh, through our regional representatives. So in Eastern Uganda, we have uh, our brother, Mr. Peter Gidongo Wasagami of North Mbale Diocese, and also Mr. Tusu Vira Christopher of Busoga Diocese. They represent the Eastern region on the Provincial Fathers Union Executive Committee, and they are going to ensure that this guide reaches to all the 10 dioceses of Eastern Uganda. Thank you, Emmanuel. All right, let me have, let me have one more uh, person, then we get going. I see technical pop. I don't know <laughs> the name of the person. I only see the name of the device. So techno pop to power. You are raising your hand. Go ahead and give your very brief comment, and then we get to the launch. Okay. Yes, uh, Honorable Gidongo, Peter, unmute yourself and keep your comment brief as the last person. Unfortunately, your your network is not very supportive. We are not hearing you, though we see you talking, our brother. Maybe you can post in the chat room. So at this moment, I see Karen Dr. Ruth Senyonyi asking, is there an online version and is it for sale? Number one, there is an online version. Number two, it is free. It is not for sale. It's going to be sent all over the country 
freely and it will be uh, there will be an online version to be sent out. In fact, it will be much more online than offline. All right. So at this moment, ladies and gentlemen, I would like us to get going to the last item. We welcome our patron of the Father's Union to give his comments and officially launch this first of a kind provincial Father's Union Fellowships Guide 2024 and give us a benediction as we end today. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome our papa, our patron, the Most Reverend Dr. Samuel Stephen Kazimba Mugalu, the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda. His grace, you are very welcome. Uh, Your Excellency, Samuel Bakutana, praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. Amen. All participants, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was, who is, and who will be. Let me congratulate you, Father Zinion uh, members, for this achievement. Father Zinion, this is such a great, great achievement that we are here gathered together men, men, in the morning hours for God's purpose. I cannot take this for granted. So thank you very, very much. And uh, members, allow me to appreciate our uh, president, uh, Mr. Samuel Bakutana. Let us appreciate him for his visionary leadership for his zeal, for his love for the men. I am so grateful because at last, uh, finally, we have got someone who wants to redeem the image of the men so that we go back in our position where God created us. And I'm so grateful that on this uh, in this meeting we have uh, uh, Carolyn Dr. Ruth Senyonyi, who is very supportive of uh, men's ministry as well, because she knows that uh, men and women must work together. So thank you very, very much, uh, our president, for your zeal, for your creativity. And members, I want you to know this is a, a, a professional executive coach. So all this is giving us, we would be paying a lot of money and somebody would be writing a big check for uh, this professional, but he's giving us these services free because of love. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for picking it from your father who is a reverend. I am so grateful to see a son of a priest doing all this. We are so uh, uh, boastful, but grateful to God for you. I want to appreciate your wife, Walter Meron, uh, uh, for supporting you to God be good and take our appreciation uh, uh, to Walter Meron, your wife. <laughs> and she's here with me, Your Grace. <laughs> oh, pray the Lord. Walter Meron, thank you for supporting uh, His Excellency. Let me appreciate uh, all of you for coming. Thank you very, very much. I must appreciate the Father. Welcome, Your Grace. I must appreciate Father Zinion, a leader from Madi West Nile. Thank you so much. Uh, Father Zinion Namirembe, Mr. Nai Gandhi, Sangareino, Sangare Irala. I want to appreciate uh, Bishop Amos Magezi for uh, that teaching, which is very, very important. 
and thank you so so much all of you for uh sacrificing this time in the morning to come and be part of this this is very historical hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 already captured never to neglect the, the habit of fellowshipping like those who had started and that is really something we need to capture so i'm happy that uh, we Father Zinion, led by our, our leader, we are building on the provincial theme for next year. And not the this world. And you have contextualized it to ensure that it fits with the, the Father Zinion, our values, the integrity, all these things are very, very important. Let me urge you, members <clears throat> and leaders, please follow this province of Father's Union Fellowship Guide. It will help you a lot because I have seen uh, the, the, the sub topics, the sub themes are very, very helpful. They will help you as a person to grow, but they also help uh, our fellowships to grow they can also help us to to become uh powerful leaders and will become fat fatty people f a t like you learned it in a life ministry f f a t faithful available and teachable each one of us is called to be a fat father's union member faithful available and teachable Actually, we need to become fats, faithful, available, teachable, and sendable, and sendable, so, so that we can grow ourselves and grow our families, we grow our church. We can be very instrumental even in our churches. Let me appreciate that 3P model, uh, participatory, practical, and priority. That's very, very important. I want to thank God. Once again, thank you so, so much for uh, setting aside this time to meet together. Please let this be taken down to our fellowships. Let me request you to support one another. Let me request you always to meet, to pray, to encourage one another, to appreciate one another to compliment to each other, to always uplift each other. And at the end of the day, the Church of Uganda, the body of Christ will be built. At this moment, let me take this singular honor to launch the Provincial Father's Union Fellowship Guide for your use. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen, amen. Oh. Father, thank you so, so much, King of Kings, for this time. And the blessings of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon each one of you, now and forevermore. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah, amen. hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you very much, our beloved Archbishop, for finding the time to be with us this morning and also to give us the encouragement that you have given. Thank you for the leadership you are offering to the Church of Uganda and the Ministry of the Family and for launching this first of the kind, unique of the kind, Provincial Fathers Union Fellowships Guide 2024. My brothers and my sisters, this marks the end of our meeting this morning. Let's go and spread this news this Christmas in our churches, let everybody know there is a guide to guide them as far as the fellowships of the Father's Union are concerned. And all men, whoever would like to use the guide, let them access it and use it. Let men meet, let men gather. I continue to appreciate all the different people who have taken uh, part in this session today, the people who have shared the testimony of the ministry they have been doing, 
in their dioceses and their regions. Bishop Amos for sharing the word of the day. And everyone who has come to be with us. Special thanks to the ladies in our midst who have joined us this morning as we launch this guide. May the Lord bless you indeed as you go through Christmas. May it be a season when we remember the reason, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Thank you very much once again for coming. May the Lord bless you. This marks the end of this important morning. Be well.